Hello and welcome back to Latinx Montessori. My name is Orlando and in this video I will explain the differences between Montessori and Waldorf. Now I understand why choosing one or the other may be confusing and that's because both methods of teaching have many things in common. I will cover things like the philosophy of Montessori and Waldorf, how the curriculum is structured, how the lessons are given, um, the learning environment setup and many other key points. Uh, so by the end of this video, you will have a solid understanding of both mythologies and make a decision uh, to see which one, which school is right for your child or which method you want to apply at home. Um, now, before I continue, I would appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you can become a member of this parenting community. Let's begin with the Montessori philosophy, which is based on the observations of Dr. Maria Montessori, and it involves giving children choices of learning activities while the teacher acts as a guide instead of giving instructions. Um, Maria Montessori observed that children are naturally curious and they have an innate desire to learn about the world around them. One of her most famous quotes that truly represents the Montessori philosophy is follow the child. And that means we need to observe our children to see how they interact with their environment um, and adjust it accordingly to make sure that they're always being met with the right developmental challenge. The way a Montessori classroom is organized allows children to move around as they work on various activities. And they also learn to respect everybody's space and not interrupt as another child works on an activity. Our daughter surprised us one day when she was working on an activity. I don't remember what it was, uh, but we tried to help and she said, I am working now. And we're like, okay, we'll give you some space. And this is what I like about the Montessori philosophy. Children learn to respect another person's personal space. There is also a big focus on independence. And one way to become independent is by giving them freedom within limits. Your child will learn to choose activities that are aligned with their current interest. Um, and this allows them to learn at their own pace. You will also notice that many books in the Montessori classroom include realistic images uh, with no fantasy or fictional characters. And this is because children can understand and connect with the real world when they see real images of people, animals, and objects rather than illustrations. Now, I know there aren't many books with real images, um, so I recommend books that are based on real life. And we actually have a big list of Montessori inspired books on our Amazon storefront. I'll leave the link in the description below so you can check those books out. The Montessori philosophy does not believe in pretend play. So in a Montessori classroom, you will not find play kitchens, doll houses, or anything that could be used for imaginative play. But you will see real kitchens and tableware like glass cups and plates. Uh, real uh, knives, forks, and spoons. And as I mentioned before, this philosophy promotes a connection to real things and encourages children to gain experience through real world activities. A lot of the materials that you see in a Montessori classroom, like the sound cylinders, the pink tower, or cylinder blocks, were actually designed by Maria Montessori. Uh, she tested them out and modified them so children can be fully engaged as they work with these materials. You will also notice that a typical Montessori classroom has child-sized furniture and tools made of high-quality materials such as wood and glass. And you can create a similar space in your home by organizing your child's room with learning materials in baskets or wooden trays and placing them on low open shelves for easy access. The focus of the Montessori philosophy is the development of your child through practical life activities such as cleaning and gardening. Now you will see children doing a lot of practical life activities because this is how they develop lifelong skills. And at about age three, they will be introduced to academic subjects like math and reading. Montessori guides give one-on-one -on -one lessons because they can tailor their instructions to meet the specific needs um, and interests of every child. And they can also adapt the pace and style of instruction to match the child's readiness um, and learning preferences. Montessori classrooms have mixed age groups, usually spanning a full three years. Uh, and some schools have programs for babies and infants, but those are usually hard to find. And the purpose of having kids of various ages is to encourage learning and collaboration um, and to foster a sense of community and empathy among children. Now let's talk about the Waldorf approach, which is based on the philosophy of Rudolf Steiner, who was an Austrian philosopher. Waldorf's mantra is education of the head, heart, and hands. And this approach focuses on your child's intellectual development, which is the head, the nurturing of emotional and moral qualities, which is the heart, 
and practical hands-on skills and abilities, which is the hand. Children in a Waldorf school learn through play with teacher guidance, which is important to promote their creativity and imagination. Um, however, teachers usually structure all of the play um, just to make sure that it aligns with Waldorf's goals and values. Waldorf also places a big emphasis on imaginative play as a fundamental element of a child's development because it sort of encourages creativity, problem solving, and emotional development. Um, they also include storytelling and fantasy um, as a way to promote a child's imagination. All of the children in a Waldorf school are the same age and the teacher usually stays with the same group of children for about five to eight years. Um, and this creates a positive teacher-student bond and also allows the teacher to gain a comprehensive understanding of each child's unique strengths, uh, challenges and developmental progress. And unlike the Montessori philosophy, Waldorf schools do not introduce academics because they believe that children benefit more from a relaxed and holistic approach that nurtures their um, physical, emotional, and creative development before starting formal academics. The classrooms are designed to create a home away from home atmosphere. They use a lot of pastel colors, candles, wooden toys, essential oils, and this sort of creates a sense of security and comfort. Um, a lot of the walls are also decorated with artwork from every student, which adds a personal touch to the atmosphere or to their environment. Now, although both approaches have their unique philosophy, they do share some similarities. And the first one is that they both value um, the development of practical life skills and see these skills as vital for your child's development and growth. They also follow a very holistic approach to education. The goal is to prepare the child for life and not just for school or academics. Both philosophies believe that children are unique individuals uh, with their own developmental timelines and interests. They also emphasize a deep respect for the child. And this is something we do at home all the time. We give our daughter space when she needs it. We respect her decisions and we're always following her needs and interests. Both approaches use hands-on learning materials because hands-on learning actively engages our senses and allows children to explore, experiment, and really discover the world around them at their own pace. You will also notice that both approaches use high quality and natural materials such as wood, which is the most common type of material you will see um, in a Montessori or Waldorf setting. Um, you will not see uh, plastic or battery operated toys, mainly because this type of toys only entertain and fascinate your child rather than promote their development. Now, something I like about these philosophies is that the weather does not interfere with your child's development. So regardless of the weather, your child is going to spend a lot of time outside. If it is snowing, they will play in the snow. If it is raining, they will play in the rain and jump in puddles. Um, and it, if, if it is hot, they are going to play with water. They will be doing a lot of water play. Also, both Montessori and Waldorf schools limit or avoid the use of technology, especially during the early years. Um, they prefer human interactions over screen time. And finally, both approaches aim to cultivate a love for learning. These philosophies foster a true passion for learning, understanding, and engaging with their surroundings. Now that you understand both philosophies, which one should you choose? If you're looking for a school, chances are that you're going to have to choose one or the other because you won't find schools that apply both philosophies. But if you are a stay-at-home parent, homeschooling your child, or simply want to bring one of these philosophies into, into your home, you can actually apply both philosophies. We use the Montessori method at home uh, for about 95% of the time, but we also emphasize nature as a way to learn about our environment. We also allow our daughter to pretend play using her play kitchen, dolls, and, and other toys uh, because we want to continue to uh, foster and improve her creativity and imagination. And that's because play is crucial for brain development. We actually have a course on the benefits of play where we provide you with the tools to nurture your child's independence and confidence all through play. Um, I'm going to leave the link in the description below. So go ahead and enroll in this course because I highly recommend it. So the bottom line is if you want your child to be independent, responsible and confident, then the Montessori approach is right for you. But if you want to nurture your child's creativity, imagination, and hold off on academics, then Waldorf is a great choice for your child. 
For us, the Montessori philosophy closely aligns with our parenting style and beliefs, and this is why we are raising our daughter um, using the Montessori approach. Plus, she is in a great Montessori school where her developmental needs are always being met. If there is anything else you would like to know about this topic, or if you have some helpful information to share with other parents, go ahead and leave a comment below. I also encourage you to watch the videos that will appear here shortly, um, where we share practical uh, approaches to raising happy, independent, and confident children. But before you check them out, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell so you never miss an episode. Thanks for watching. I will see you soon.